Hey, y'all. How's everybody? How y'all doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. I thank just, you. I was just talking to somebody from Texas. You sound a lot like my grandma. All right. Welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate. People still coming in? Good. Okay, let's go to the blog this morning. And, <clears throat> okay, good. October 9th. Let's talk real estate. Time is flying. The uh, social media today is boo. And I don't know if there'll be another Halloween one, but now's as good a time as any to use this one. So get that one out there. It's a very good, a very good photograph. And I know it's... Um, the intent behind it is our new uh, our new vice president of marketing. And we'll be seeing a lot more. Um, sorry, Coom, but we'll be seeing a lot more pictures like this. <laughs> <clears throat> Some people think it's overloaded with children, but uh, and it may, may and it may well be, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but they are so cute. Aren't they cute? <laughs> they are. I didn't realize my camera wasn't on. Sorry. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um... <clears throat> okay. Uh, so today, what what can I say? We are firmly planted ourselves in the fourth quarter. It's uh, October 9th. So the fourth quarter is here. We all know about the attributes of the fourth quarter. Slows down. It's got the holidays. It's got the weather issues just starting. So the fourth quarter is the fourth quarter. So the question is, are you excited about it? Would you like to take advantage of the fourth quarter? It's also the fourth quarter. So if you're for your annual goals, you want to you want to reach your annual goals. All right. So is there any reason you can't have a great uh, time of year for yourself in the fourth quarter? So at this moment, you're in one of three positions. So one, you've either had a phenomenal year so far, and a few of us have. From January through September, your production was up, your income was up, your transaction was count was up. It was a phenomenal year. Or two, you've been exactly the way you've been staying. It's the same production, the same income, same number of listings, and you've not experienced the growth perhaps that you were hoping for this year. Or you didn't have the year that you were looking for this year, now that we're in the fourth quarter. And maybe your production was down and your income was down. Maybe not quite the banner year that uh, you set out for when you were making those goals. And, <clears throat> you know, it really doesn't matter right now what either one of these three positions you're in. If you're interested in having a phenomenal fourth quarter this year, there's still plenty of time. Uh, to do so much in terms of growing a real estate career and salvaging the fourth quarter and maybe ending with a decent year. So it really doesn't matter at this point. What matters here is going forward. And the first thing I would ask you to do to have a phenomenal fourth quarter, I'd ask you to pull out the calendars, your monthly calendars for the fourth quarter, October, November, and December. Then take a detailed look at the days you're going to work. My favorite project. I look forward to this. I'll be doing this now for next year because I've got my annual calendars. I am such a geek now. It's ridiculous. I've got uh, big boards on the wall. And not only do I have those annual calendars that are, that are that big, I also have the academic calendars. And I like to keep those side by side. And I know that's going to screw me up with one of these days, but... I really like to do that because it gives you a very different perspective on the year if January's uh, sitting right in the middle of that calendar. Use an academic calendar if if that appeals to you because it really changes your perspective. That the fourth quarter uh, is not so much the end, it's more the beginning of the year on an academic calendar. All right, so move forward, get the calendar, ask yourself how many days you're gonna work and write those on the calendar. These are work days. These are off days. You should be doing that all the time. Uh, holidays, vacations, any events that you that you know of, schedule everything you can right now. Decide exactly when you're going to be working. Are you going to work some bonus day Saturdays and Sundays? Are you going to schedule your open houses? 
Uh, so to decide exactly when you're working, how many listing appointments do you want to go on for the year? You need to know that because there is a mechanism to get listing appointments. Um, it's how many calls you make. It's how many contacts you make. So you need to have a number. It sounds academic. Well, I'd like 10 listings. I'd like 20 listings for, you know, are you going to make that many contacts? Probably not, you know, so maybe think of it the other way. How many contacts am I willing to make to get to a certain number of listings? Because those two go together. And this is a business. The business has been around for 100 years. I've been in the business 30 years. Our brand has been 50 years. There is a relation to how many people you talk to and how many listings you get. So the other one, I've got recommit to a daily schedule, and that makes sense. Of isn't this isn't the fourth quarter a dress rehearsal for the upcoming year? Perhaps uh, recommit to the right daily schedule that's going to work for your production, and uh, you want to work to implement it. And let me just skip down here because the final one I want to say is review your skills, and that's where we're here to help all of our managers at Century Twenty One North Star and Century Twenty One Corporate. There is such a wealth of information. Uh, that uh, the management is tapping into in a large way right now. Think about this with all the changes in our industry in 2024. Have you noticed that the agents that are highly skilled are producing uh, head and shoulders above the agents who don't have the sales skills? And where do you stand on your current sales skills? And when I ask that, this applies to me as much as anybody, set your ego aside and don't, you know, maybe you think you know everything. Maybe you, you, you're so happy when you go into a listing appointment because you get uh, six out of 10 or seven out of 10. Uh, but you can do much better than that. There are people who get nine out of 10 all the time. And they have, how do they do that? They have better skills. Think about uh, where else you need to approve. Um, prospecting skills, lead follow-up skills pre-qualifying, listing presentation, objection handling, closing for a sales. So think about that. What skills will you address in the fourth quarter so you don't drag those weaker skills into the next year? So let's go to skills improvement curriculum. Like I always say, that's a good winter activity uh, for the next three months, four months, five months. How long is winter here? So let's take advantage of the new year, what's continuing to be a strong real estate market, and remember to treat your business like a business. All right, speaking of business, what are we up to? Let's let's find this, all of our North Star listings. And 33, hmm, we've been sitting at 33, and that's good because we've been selling, so we have some inventory. 33 minus our commercial. These are just residential. Let's see if I get the map to pull up. Well, I can't get the map to pull up. But Kung, how are we doing in Portland? Portland's doing well, staying busy. Uh, we have scheduled closing, closings uh, this week. Uh, looks like Tyler will be closing on a big property uh, come Friday. Um, we have a couple people going under contract. Um, let's see. Looks like I also went under contract a couple days ago. And uh, there's also price changes on our listings, price adjustments, which is good. Mm. You know, if a property is sitting on the market for a while, you know, it's it's time to have that conversation with your sellers. And uh, our agents are doing that. Uh, good job. And, uh, good job. Yep. We'll uh, keep you guys updated as soon as uh, there are any other changes. So. Okay. Okay. Very good. Shauna, how is, how is Washington? Washington is doing very well. We had one closing, uh, Stephen Burwright had a closing this, I don't know if it was last Friday, but he had a closing in Castle Rock, a nice one. Uh, Jennifer Washam had one go into contract in Longview. And uh, we have about I think there's about five scheduled for this month, five more scheduled for this month. Um, Lena and I put one into contract, um, double-ended the warehouse in Washougal commercial building slash office flex use 
um, got that into contract yesterday, I believe. Um, right. Over the weekend, I had a buyer go into contract um, out in Ariel, Washington, and I'll be listing their house today. It's contingent on the sale of their house, which will be priced really good. It'll go live tomorrow, everybody. If you have a buyer at the 500 thousand range it'll be a four bedroom two and a half bath um it will has 2022 square feet and a beautiful backyard it's really gorgeous back there in private so i feel like at five hundred thousand, that's going to attract a lot of attention right away right. great i see two new listings there with burrite windlock and longview too that longview one looks gorgeous with that big yes. sweeping lawn yeah that one he had listed on the 27th of September, so maybe it just is showing up now. Oh, it just popped up. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Lovely. So is that your first listing of the fourth quarter? You're going it on is. Today? Yeah. Nice. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Nice. Off to a good start. Off to a good start. Let's have a look at this, because I did see Steve Burright uh, just closed yesterday on a large one. And it wasn't as large as I thought. You know, uh, Shauna, the cooperating broker was Century 21 Lund in Chehalis. Oh, we, nice. have a, we have a long history of the title company sending the money to the wrong place. <laughs> and they sent me all the money. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to give money like that back? I know. I know that was a that, good paycheck. Yeah, that was. <laughs> but you know they worked hard. Yeah. Well, oh, that one is a brand new listing. That one right there. I just haven't put it into the spreadsheet yet because we uh, just just listed it. That one is brand new. It is very beautiful. That yeah, he put up two just recently. That's gorgeous. Yeah, that he's busy, 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 busy. Yeah. Okay, that is a wood house on a on a more modern modern style. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. And what's going on inside? Fireplace. Wonderful. Very nice. Well, congratulations, Steve, on that. I'm sure that will sell. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are things in in uh, Idaho, Mario? Uh, Annie, our new agent, uh, listed her personal home, mm -hmm. uh, and um, Augie's closing two deals. Uh, Jeff has a, a listing, at, and Lee has one as well. And um, Augie has, um, I believe he's got like <clears throat> five, one, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he's got six. Um, but he has two closing this week. Um nice. I don't know if you know, but uh, Jeff's wife um, is in the hospital oh, in, yeah. in okay. Utah. Did you hear about that? No. Yeah. We're sorry. Um, okay. So yeah. Jeff is in Utah right now. Um, uh, his wife uh, was severely burned uh, and um, she oh is going through another surgery today. Oh, geez. Um, and so she's in critical condition, but uh, she had surgery yesterday as well. Oh, and uh, a large percentage of her body was was burnt. So uh, keep them in your prayers. Uh, yes. I talked to Jeff yesterday. And um, so he's there in, in Utah right now. They flew his wife uh, from Idaho to Utah because of the severity of the burns. Okay. Well, yeah, keep keep him in your thoughts. We all we all wish him well. Okay. Uh, what was I going to look at? I saw one in Boise. Okay, here's a Boise address. What do you know about this one? Uh, North Liverpool in Boise, Idaho. That's Lee, I believe. Lee, Lee, yeah, Lee. I believe that's Lee's. Um, yeah. Okay. And then Annie's is at the very top. It's adorable. Okay. Got Cleveland, clear at the top, cute little... Updated home. That is cute. Okay, yeah. and, was, and that's in Caldwell. Okay. Mm. Okay. Oh wow. Wonderful work, Idaho. It's been redone beautifully. Yeah. yeah, I met with a client earlier this morning, um, and uh, on a commercial property for about three hundred five, which I believe we're going to make an offer on. 
uh, the one we did last week, uh, we got outbidded, but he really liked the one, this one that I showed him earlier today. So he's, um, we're most likely going to make an offer at some point this week. Nice. All right. All right. Very good. Very good activity. And let's, let's keep filling up the map. There's still some empty space in the map. It's a big, you know, the Western United States is, is huge. And if you don't believe me, just start driving around to some of these listings, some, some of North Star's offices like we're doing. It's a big place. Uh, Lena was complaining. She went down to Eugene and then she went all the way to Coos Bay. And I said, you know, you've just about, the United States is huge. You've just about, you went halfway across Germany on that trip when you compare it to other places. Well, that's so, true. This is a big place. There's your geography lesson for the day. We also right. throw that in for you. Oregon and Germany are the same size. Just <laughs> there there you go. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, I, if you don't remember anything from today's meeting, there you go. That aerial when I sold is 42 minutes from my battleground house. So it's way up there. And I yeah. drove to Astoria last, <clears throat> last week. So yeah, it's, it's all about driving right now, I think. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is. All right. We have, let's see, Kuhn, what's happening? Anything in Portland as far as meetings and, and lunch and learns? Uh, not yet. So I am still working on getting uh, October scheduled. It's, uh, we, we always have it on the last Thursday of the month, so it's going to be on Halloween this time. But uh, I will announce the topic uh, as soon as uh, it's in the books. Okay. Okay. Shana, do you have anything scheduled yet? I had, I've had one in October already. I'm looking to go for November now. Um, and I always like coming to the Portland ones too. So I'll probably be able to do that. Um, but no, I haven't, haven't a clue quite yet, but I believe it will be um, sponsored by First American this time. All right. Nice. And I haven't heard back from the Longview Chamber of Commerce about whether they want to do an event. <laughs> Um, I don't know how they I don't know what the response to their poll was of business owners on commerce. Um, huh. although I'll, I'll give them a call today and see if they have an answer for us. Oh, that'd be great. Nice. I mean, yeah. why we can't go, you know, to Fred Meyer and fill up in candy and, <laughs> and do that. I don't know why anybody would say no to that because they, they love to participate on commerce. Get yep. a busy day every time. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mario, what are you contemplating for a, a future training and events? Uh, we did have a lunch and learn for the month of October. For the month of November, um, I um, since we I'm going to have a new agent uh, most likely join us on Thursday, and then we have Annie. I'm probably going to do something on uh, Moxie Works, uh, perhaps uh, teaching them how to do a CMA, and I'll open it up to anybody else. Uh, okay. as well. Uh, Judy, um, as I mentioned, uh, recently joined a new uh, fi a financial company, but she got into an accident. She um, fell. Oh, <laughs> so we keep getting that delayed. So um, she wants to sponsor uh, an event where she goes over her, uh, her new um, uh, loan options, if you will, um, mostly bridge loans which is one of the few, it sounds like a great offering uh, that her company does, but I'm waiting on her to tell me when uh, she is ready to do that because she did fall and uh, is in, um, was in the hospital as well. Okay. Okay. Well, we should, we wish her well and we're looking forward to that because she's, she's a good presenter. She's a mortgage lender. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be presenting again in November to the Idaho real estate association to some new students who are taking the class there to get their license. Wonderful. Good. Uh, what else is on the horizon? Coos Bay. So finally, things move a little slower in Coos Bay. I wouldn't. I would have not really surprised. But uh, have we got a bid yet on those signs, or have we just got some graphics for the? Uh, it's coming. Uh, we're still working on getting the signs up. 
they should be uh, created here shortly. Um, I think uh, they're going to look really good, you know, with the black background and the champagne uh, yeah. logo. Uh, they have really great uh, windows to put stickers on. And, uh, you know, the sign's going to look really good on the storefront. So, okay. Uh, we'll present that as soon as uh, they go up. And then we'll schedule a grand opening as soon as uh, the office is 100% ready. So. Okay. All right, good. All right. <clears throat> All right, this is what we're here for. What? How's the market? All right, the market is mortgage rates dropped to their lowest level since February 2023. That's been the headline for a few weeks. The 30-year fix bumped up slightly to 6.12. Uh, so mortgage rates increase this week, but remain in the low 6% range, which is more than a percentage point lower than they were just four months ago. So that's a big difference. And um, it's certainly a big difference since February when they were in the sevens. So this has opened up uh, large uh, opportunities for a very large number of buyers. So keep that in mind. There's some uncertainty as to what the rest of uh, 2024 looks like for interest rates. Uh, but as of now, market analysis are ex analysts are expecting the Federal Reserve to implement two more rate cuts by the end of the year. All right. So I think we're in a good place for that. We're in a good place for now. So hopefully the fourth quarter and even the first and second quarters of next year will have the same uh, stability in interest rates. And hopefully people will get busy um, building houses or considering selling their house and we'll have some more inventory. Uh, here's a new chart, 6.12. You can see dramatic uh, decrease from the high sevens on this chart. That's a good thing for your clients to see. I found a, a good uh, affordability index. So I'll be sharing this because I think the affordability index is very important. And the affordability index measures whether or not a typical family earns enough income to qualify for a mortgage loan on a typical home at the national and regional levels based on the most recent price and income data. So in order to get the affordability index, you have to know how much a house, the median house costs and how much the median family earns. And then it's a ratio and you want to be at 100. You want a median family income to match exactly what it takes to purchase the median home. And so you want to be at 100. And I believe this is the... Um, I, I wanted to say, where did I get this? I got this from the RMLS. So this is the MLS data. So we're at 94.3 here on the West Coast in this region. 94.3. So... The uh, that means that the median family is short by that six five or six percent. So you want it to be a hundred or more. Then they just have all the more buying power. Look at twenty twenty one, the composite index one hundred and forty eight. So they could buy one and a half median priced houses, and today they can buy less than that. So that's an issue, and the median price house here they're showing is four twenty two. The family income is $102,000, uh, but they need $108,600 to get it. So that's what it is. Uh, affordability is important, uh, and it's a little bit it's a little bit tight right now. And the absorption rate tells you what kind of market it is. Three months of inventory in the RMLS indicates a transitional market between a seller's market and a buyer's market. And the chart tells the whole story of what kind of market you're in. Um, three is just uh, just on the border between a seller's market and a balanced market. So it is still uh, favoring sellers. All right, the National Association of Realtors has a quick report on jobs. And there's no national economic recession on the horizon. That is very good news. Let's see what they have to say. All right, cool. What do they What do they have? Well, um, yeah, there is no national economic recession on the horizon. 
which is good. <laughs> the yeah. net payroll job addition in September strained to 254,000 after adding much lighter job gains in previous months. The annual wage gain also accelerated to 4% after softening to 36 just two months earlier. More jobs means more uh, real estate demand from retail spaces to apartment leases. Home buyings will also increase provided the conditions are right and more inventory choices and lower mortgage rates will help. Even with the solid job figures, the Federal Reserve will continue to cut its short-term interest rates, but with more caution. Mortgage rates, however, which are not controlled by the Fed, look to rise modestly and temporarily. This just reinforces the notion that trying to make market time the best mortgage rates uh, can backfire. Yep, I mean, right now is the best time to do it. So don't wait. Don't wait. One real estate sector that is not moving forward is the office market. Jobs in professional business services and financial activities have risen by more than 2 million compared to pre-COVID days. Yet these typically uh, office using jobs are not taking in taking on office spaces. Expect therefore a relatively stronger housing demand in the suburbs and in fun recreation destinations. Oh. We're seeing that, yep, in uh, most of our markets. The suburbs are booming at the moment and cities, you know, the, the bigger cities, uh, urban areas are slowing down. <clears throat> Things are We've moving. definitely so. seen that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suburbs and fun recreation destinations. I imagine anything with a beach right. would fall under that category. We got plenty of beaches in Oregon and Washington. Mm -hmm. Even more in California, if you want to keep driving. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So good economy. Ah, everything is just so cheerful. What could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, let's have a look at um, let's have a look at stats. So um, I tried to simplify things for every everybody and give you something to share with your dat with your uh, sphere of influence and your clients and the people that you're working with. And remember, you can just click on this blog. You can't see what's happening, but I'm clicking on it and it's dragging it over to the desktop. And I can put that in emails. I can put that on Facebook. I can do anything with that to get that out there. So the clients know that I know the market. And the Portland Metro has a median sales price now, a little bit down of 531. And they're 61 days on the market. Uh, average sale price, 623. Medium price, 531. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if you sent that to somebody and somebody called you and said, what's the difference between the average sale price and the median sale price? Wouldn't you love to get an I'm smart question like that? And this, these will prompt that. <laughs> I know the difference. And if you don't know the difference, look it up right now, just, just in case somebody asks. This is uh, Southwest Washington, 66 days on the market, and the median sales price down 3.7% to 536. So we're seeing in both of these large metro areas uh, down by 3%. That's a rolling 12-month average and showing them down. Coos Bay, very different market, 103 days on the market. I anticipate that will go up as we get into um, a different season, because it's going to be seasonal out there more than anywhere else. And $320,000 as a median price, down 14.7. So a much smaller market there. I still have June. Mario, if you can find this, this is what I'd like to post, is this, this exact report here, this market snapshot. If you could find those. That would be a really good thing to have. You have a median sales price of 424.9, and that's down 4.9% year over year. And 48 days on the market. <clears throat> okay, that's the market. And just a reminder about Century 21 University. And let's start with Shauna. Shauna, you're you're going to be taking this 21 day challenge, or do you have your own? How did that work? I'm I'm taking that one. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Maybe after I go through it, I'll create my my own afterwards. Okay. 
All right. So Shauna's doing it. And if you don't know, Shauna is uh, is uh, historically the top agent in the company. And she is doing this and she is inviting you all to participate with her. I I recommend you do that. Mm-hmm. I really do. So Exciting. reach out to her. Reach I know out. Kat, Kat's going to do the Accelerate. She's starting that. I think she already did start it, as a matter nice. of fact. I wasn't going to tell anyone, Shauna. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's out. Oh, God. I'm oh. so sorry. It's okay. I started, I started on the 21st <clears throat> now that everyone knows. <laughs> She's keeping it a secret? Yeah, just, you know, secret wins. Sorry. Oh. I, know you, I know you're going to be successful, so that's why I brought it up. We're proud of you for doing it. <laughs> okay, now I just marked my calendar to call you every three days. <laughs> During the no challenge. Pressure. So everybody knows now. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, it's going to be a good one. You should get a listing during the 21 day challenge and you will if you follow the program. Now the program program is going to ask you to do things. The program is going to ask you to do things that may get you out of your comfort zone. Mm. Uh, my only advice is try it. It's not going to kill you. Try those things that get you out of your comfort zone. And that's what it's for. And you'll have some support because other people are doing it as well. All right, uh, accelerate is our is our longer program, and uh, it'll teach you all the basics about how to do real estate. They're going to have that October twenty fourth, and start that December second. That's a great thing to do, especially December second, because that'll go into uh, into January. Oh no, it just goes to December nineteenth. Oh, so it'll be done by the holidays, and um, that's really motivating, and it and it gives you a good a, a good overview of everything there is to know. And you will pick up ideas on how to get clients and how to prospect that you didn't know before. And definitely we have our listing presentation here. We have our new buyer. Uh, is that a buy? Shauna, what is that? Is it a buyer presentation? That's that's with Century 21? I'm sorry, say that again. This is the listing presentation. That's the listing, but there's also a buyer presentation. Oh, there is. Yes, there is. You can send them like a tour of different houses. You can, there's a couple of few different things. And then there's just one that gives them basic information of what to expect as a buyer. Glossary of, you know, words. It's really nice. It's really nice. Okay. It's, It's just something that you can do extra, especially since we're signing contracts with people. So, um, I highly recommend going in there and checking it out. Okay. Nice. Very good. Okay. And just this is just a quick little video of some of the new marketing. And you can put this on social media wherever a video is appropriate. And I know Facebook would work for that. It's short. <laughs> so oh. I guess that's good for uh, right. good good for Facebook. Right. Catches the attention. It catches the attention. There's no cats in it. <laughs> so <Which> is- boy. <laughs> <laughs> cats get cats get a lot of attention, but I don't know that they sell a lot of houses. All right. That may be an issue. That may be an issue. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a couple of things we can do. Sean, I know you wanted to, um, you had a few things you'd like to talk about. And yeah. uh, is there any way I can help you? Do you want to share your screen? Do you want me to find something? If I, I have it up, if you want to let me share my screen, I'll go what? ahead and just quickly yeah. show how to make a social media post um, from your Moxie um, in, um, Impress. Moxie Impress. Okay. Moxie Impress. And you should be able to share. Okay, I'm bringing it up. Okay, you should be able to see my screen here. Uh, this is, I came in through Moxie Works, went to Moxie Impress, came to my um, listings that are here. I actually have my sold, some of my solds in there too because I wanted to do some other things. But today I was gonna show you how you can do a, a social media, make a social media image so that you can post like it for an open house. So I'll go ahead and bring this one up. Um, 
Here is the social media, price reduced. You can do all different things in here, you guys. And it just takes a couple clicks. Social media open house. And then you hit the edit button. Save and continue, because it already has the name of it there. And then you can pick your photos. You can crop them. You can change them out. I already selected three, um, and that was really easy just by um, going to the project photos that pull in from the RMLS and putting it in there. I'm going to show you can switch them, bring one of these front photos in, a different front photo, and just add. There it is. And then you can move them in different air. You can switch them around, save and continue. Here's all the data that will be on that social media image, um, open house, the dates, the times, um, all the other pertinent information. It's very uh, simple, but easy to uh, read as a consumer, save and continue. And then make sure all your information is correct. Looks like I made a little typo there, so I'm gonna fix that. And I, for that, I put in another little um, statement because I had a drawing and then save and continue. And then it's gonna tell me I changed it and I know I did, so I push okay. And then this is how easy it is, you download it. And it goes to your, your tray right there. And then you can save it or just drag it and drop it into your Facebook, your Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever you want to go. Uh, you can email it, however you want to use it. But that is how easy that is. Also, um, the present. John, you were talking about this. I thought I'd just jump on here really yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. Because you can do a buyer presentation, it's right here. So you go to your Moxie Present, and it's going to take a little longer because there's a bunch of projects in there. And then, okay, let's see. Actually, I'm going to have to come back to do that later because. Sometimes I'm signed in as a manager and sometimes I'm signed in as a, um, <laughs> as a, uh, an agent, an agent. So yeah. I would have to re-sign in. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll, uh, it's actually, I have it, a PDF and I can email it to anybody who wants, or we can link, make a link to it. So it's already a pre-done one. So, okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing as I'm clicking around on my desktop. Right. <clears throat> okay. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all you have? Good. That's all I got right now. Um, well, I've so got it. something for you. Okay. I've got something for you. Let me share my screen. I just want to quickly look at something. And <clears throat> here's a topic um, that's a favorite of mine and, and Shauna's. Let's see if that comes up. So negotiating contracts, I want to run just quickly through some of these points. And Shauna and I, we can do this together. And oh, there is my quote. I was so proud. And I've been, I've been trying to recreate this and I just found it. All right, listen to this. <clears throat> if both parties, you as listing or selling agent and the other agent do their job right, negotiating is very simple. It's when one party does not do their job right. When negotiation becomes difficult. Okay. So a good listing agent has the property priced right and ready to show. A showing agent provides a CMA to their buyer and brings a solid offer to the table. Good negotiation, good negotiating means that you understand the sales process and the motivation of all parties. So that's it in a nutshell. So true. <clears throat> and I was trying to I was trying to remember where I had written that down. But if everybody's professional, if if the uh, agent does their job, priced right and ready to show, 
and the buyer and the buyer's agent brings a good buyer who has their own CMA and agrees that everything is is uh, correct. You have a very smooth transaction. What else does it say, Shauna? Almost every agent considers themselves themselves uh, good at negotiating. Most most are not because they do not have this the sales skills. Have the sales That's true. skills. There's yeah. a lot of skills to it. There's a lot of things to refine in negotiating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the emotion and drama kill negotiating power. Control what you say to the client. This is really something that I've been really working hard, um, keeping everything going on negotiations when I have double-ended one. That was, you have to just be really patient. You can't, you can't give any clue to either party what, they have said to you so that so you really have to rely on getting your client to ask for what you have to you know say, mm -hmm. get them to talk to you about what they want and then support them in their decision and present it to the to the other party wait for them to um to respond and a lot of agents i notice try to push their clients to accept everything on the first go around and you don't need to do that um, if somebody comes and brings you, they're not as skilled, they haven't done the CMA and they bring you a bad or a low offer, you have to be patient, to, you know, mm -hmm. counter it back. You I did that a lot this year. Like so many times I got low offers this year and I just, we just, we count, kept countering back at full price and they <laughs> ended up getting full price the oh, third really? time. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 normally we would try to negotiate that at one some point or the other, but sometimes you 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 got to be you're there for your client. They're counting on you to get them the most that you can you know the most that you can get them. And a lot of times it, there's there's a good compromise in the middle, but um, you just have to yeah really have to be patient. I think patience is a huge one. Has anyone else had that situation where uh, the seller just says, no, that's, that's, I'm not going to take that. Go ahead and counter back at full price. Kuhn, I think, have you had that before? Yes, most yeah. definitely. Just counter back at full price. Don't even come down a dollar. No. Just you tell them, you remind them what the price is. Yep. And then, then that's, that's their prerogative. You know, the, ultimately it's the, the seller's decision. And if you did your job right, and if you did your CMA correctly, and you advised your client, you know, where to list it, then you should be in total agreement with them, because you're the one who advised them on where they should list it. Okay. Okay. That makes you know, sense. Yeah. Going yeah. back to Shauna's, you know, <clears throat> you, you do work with some clients that aren't even willing to negotiate, <laughs> unfortunately. They're like, no, don't counter, just let it expire. <laughs> Correct. And, and and you have to advise your clients that, yeah, again, remind, yes, that is their prerogative and that's their decision. But, you know, you might advise them that we may not get another offer anytime soon. It might be worth it to talk to these buyers and see if we can work something out. But, uh, you know, hopefully yeah. the offer isn't too low and uh, insulting to the seller. And which sometimes can they are. Yeah. Sometimes they are. So both of these emotion kill drama, controlled emotions are an asset. And so that's all true. And so who are we talking to here? We're talking to the agent because this is agent training. Uh, but it's it's so it's easy for us to stay out of the emotions. We have to understand the motivation of our clients because that's what's behind their drama and their difficulties. It's all about motivation. <clears throat> that tell that that reveals the story. And you have to have a good enough relationship uh, for them to have shared their issues. And um, you need to know their issues so that you can help them. And yeah, finally with that, remember you are not buying or selling the home. It is not your problem. It is it is your client's problem that, that you're there to help them with. It's it's about them. Right. I always am telling agents that it's like, 
it, this isn't your house. This just call them and tell them this is what the they want. And if they say yes, they say yes. If they say no, they say no. It doesn't make a difference either way. You just got to work through it. Yeah, yeah. All right, what's the next one in blue? Most agents who present offers are not great agents and not doing a high volume of business. Therefore, the commission check is is vital to them. Commission should be never be part of the process. And I was just leading up to that because you don't give away, I mean, you're not buying or selling this. It goes with the last statement. It does. You it's not, it's not in the negotiating. That, that was already <laughs> that was already determined before you you wrote the offer what the commission was going to be. That's right. right. That's right. It's it it goes to being uh, what they say being attached to the outcome. You can't do your job as a professional if you're attached to the outcome. Imagine an attorney, um, either a prosecutor or a defense, who was attached to the outcome. Oh, the, I've got to get my client free on this, or I've got to I've got to negotiate a certain thing for my client, and is losing sleep over that something they don't have total control over. They're not going to do a good job for their client if they're stressed out. And, and neither are we. We're gonna we're gonna do a good job if we're at a at a arm's distance. I wanna say I recently told a client, they asked me to say, they said, well, we had another agent here that said they would do it at, you know, a certain percentage. And I said, well, I don't work for that percentage. I work for this percentage. If I start out really low for one, what does that show you about my negotiating skills? Right. Right? That doesn't show you that I'm a strong negotiator at all. And besides, if something happens later on, I have no room to help. I have nothing. So this is the where I start. My my fee is this. And they said, okay, that makes sense. There you go, everybody. There you play go. That, play this video back and memorize That's those words. Done. Because that is how it's done. <laughs> this one here, it's in smaller text here, but this is a very important statement here. Don't be afraid to ask them to accept the transaction as it stands. Let's say it, not every realtor understands this. They stick their foot in it and and muck it up sometimes. You get Why a, do they? Mm -hmm. You get a decent offer. You get a good offer that meets the seller's criteria. It's a good buyer. And it's a perfectly acceptable offer. Yes, there are some realtors who think, oh, we can get better and they just go in and do that. You can lose it that way. There are other houses out there for that buyer to buy. And maybe you're you're the first choice by only a little bit. And just by messing it up, you can lose that. So if if that is the right offer for them, they can take it. And it's okay to tell them that they can take it if it's in their best interest to do so. The offer I wrote in Ariel, they took the offer as we wrote it. It was beautiful. Ah. I love working with experienced <clears throat> agents. It's so much better. It No counter, no nothing. They just took it. And it was contingent. So we wrote a strong offer. And that's good. That's the way it should be. I've seen the opposite many times where the seller counters over a pretty small amount and the buyer has, has changed their mind. Well, if it's going to be difficult for me, I'll go buy the other house. It really does happen. Or something better comes on the market. Yeah. So don't don't be the agent that says, my job is to get you top dollar no matter what. Because it's not worth the risk sometimes. Yep. I've had it happen at inspection time, too, where they just they ask for things that the buyer, you know, you find out later, the buyer never even really wanted that. It was the agent's suggestion. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is on this blog, and this is uh, this is good training on negotiating. There's a lot of good things in here, as you can see, and uh, these are really good discussion items for here with uh, with some good agents. Yep. Right. Okay. Then I'm going to let you get back to work. It's Wednesday. We are fresh into the uh, fourth quarter, and as you can see, there's a lot of work to do. A lot of work for all of us to do. And um, so have a great week. And uh, just remember, we're here for you. Give us a call if you need anything at all. Training, uh, talk about your clients, 
uh, help with your transactions, anything at all, we'll pick up the phone. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. 27 billion. Thank you. thank you. Bye. This is showing up big. Here, here, and all across here. Oh, and not just for clients, for the community. We're lifting up others with us. This is not resting on a legacy. This is running on it. Taking all that's been learned and seen and taught and dreamed over the past 50 years to shape and fuel the next 100. Century 21. This is our century.